Hi everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to calculate probabilities when working with the normal distribution, and the focus here is going to be to solve these with our calculator. And you can see I have my calculator on the right hand side of the screen here. Throughout this tutorial we're going to work with the continuous random variable that I've called capital X, which follows a normal distribution whose mean is 88 and whose variance is 19 squared. Its standard deviation is therefore 19. And to make that clear, I'll go ahead and write that the mean is mu and equals to 88, and the standard deviation sigma is equal to 19. The first probability we need to find is the probability that x be less than or equal to 95. Now before diving onto the calculator, let me say that in an exam, whether or not we're asked, I would always recommend students to make a sketch of the bell curve and the area that this probability corresponds to. So let me quickly sketch a bell curve. I have a vertical axis, a horizontal axis like this, and a bell curve. There we go. And in the middle on the x-axis, I add the mean, so that's mu, which equals to 88. Now since we're interested in the probability that x be less than or equal to 95, we find 95 on the x-axis, so that would be roughly here, I'm adding that in green, and that area would be all of the area to the left of 95, which I'm hatching right now. Now to find that area, we go to the calculator. And on the calculator here, we can see that I'm on the home screen of my TI Inspire CX, and the first thing I'm going to do is in the scratch pad, I click on Calculate, and the function I need to find to calculate this area is the normal CDF function. And to find it, I go ahead and click on Menu. I then select the fifth option, Probability. I then select the fifth option again, Distributions. And the normal CDF is the second option I see here. So I click on that. Now I can see that I'm prompted to enter a lower bound. Well, looking at the area we're trying to calculate here, this area corresponds to all of the area enclosed by the curve and the x-axis to the left of 95. So the lower bound is in fact negative infinity. Looking at our calculator though, we can see that our calculator has entered this as negative 9 times 10 to the power of 999. In other words, our calculator doesn't enter negative infinity, instead it just enters a very large negative number. So the lower bound is just fine, and we leave it. We move on to the upper bound, and for the upper bound, that's the value of x at which our area stops. So in this case, that's 95. So I go ahead and type 95. Next, I need to enter the mean. Remember, the mean is 88. So I replace the zero that we have there by 88. And next, I need to enter the standard deviation. Well, remember, the standard deviation is 19. So I go ahead and enter 19. Done. Once everything's entered, I go ahead and click on OK. And we're done. We've just calculated the area, and it's equal to 0 0.64372. And so rounding to three significant figures, we can now state that this area is equal to 0 0.644. And in an exam, I would recommend writing that the probability that x be less than or equal to 95 is equal to norm CDF with lower bound negative infinity, upper bound 95, mean 88, and standard deviation 19, and that's equal to 0 0.644, and in parentheses I would state that we're rounding to three significant figures. Done. Let's look at the next question. We need to find the probability that x be greater than 105. Well, again, the first thing we need to do is draw a bell curve and show what area that probability corresponds to. So I quickly draw a bell curve here, something looking like this. And again, the mean is mu, which equals to 88. To show the area that corresponds to the probability that x be greater than 105, I start by finding 105 on the x-axis, so I'll just say that's here, 105. And since x has to be greater than 105, it corresponds to all of the area on the right-hand side of 105. That's the area I'm hatching now. And now to calculate this area, we go back to our calculator, 
And once more, we use the normal CDF function. So I click on menu, followed by the fifth option, probability, followed by the fifth option, distributions, followed by the second option, normal CDF. So I click on that. Again, I'm asked for the lower bound. But in this case, as we go from left to right, we can see that we're starting the area at 105. And so that is the lower bound. So I enter 105. Done. That's my lower bound. Now for my upper bound, well, looking at the bell curve we have here, although we can't sketch it, this area goes on and on and on forever. And so the upper bound would in fact be positive infinity. But rather than entering positive infinity, we're just going to enter a very large positive number. And for that, I'll go ahead and enter 99,999. And that should definitely be large enough. Next, I enter the mean. Remember, the mean is 88, so I replace this 0 by 88. And finally, I need to enter the standard deviation. Remember, the standard deviation was 19. So I replace that, that's 19. Done. Once I'm happy with what I've entered, I click on OK. And we can see here that the area has been calculated and it's equal to 0 0.185464. And rounding that to three significant figures, this area is equal to 0 0.185. And so that's the probability. And in an exam, I would write this as follows. The probability that x be greater than 105 is equal to norm CDF with lower bound 105, upper bound positive infinity, and I'd enter the mean 88 and the standard deviation 19. And that's equal to 0 0.185. And again, in parentheses, I'd specify that it's been rounded to three significant figures. Done. Finally, for the last probability we have to calculate, we need to find the probability that x be between 80 and 100. Well, again, I start by illustrating this on a bell curve. So I have my vertical axis and my horizontal axis and my bell curve. There we go. The mean is still mu equals to 88. And now I need to show the area. And for that, I look for 80 as well as 100 on the x-axis. So I'll go ahead and say that 80 is roughly here and 100 is roughly there. And so the area that we need to find is the area that I'm currently hatching in green right now. And as always, we use the calculator and the normal CDF function. So going back to my calculator, I click on menu. I then select the fifth option, probability, followed by the fifth option again, distributions, and the second option, normal CDF. I'm now asked for the lower bound. Well, the lower bound in this case is 80. So I go ahead and type in 80. Next, I need to enter the upper bound. And the upper bound in this case is 100, since x has to be less than or equal to 100. So I go ahead and type 100. Next, I replace the mean. Again, it's still 88. And the standard deviation, which remember is 19. Once I'm happy with what I've typed, I go ahead and click on OK. And we're done. We can see that the area enclosed is equal to 0 0.399311. And rounding to three significant figures, this green area is equal to 0 0.399. Finally, just as for the previous examples, I'll show how I would write that in an exam, we should write that the probability that x be between 80 and 100 is equal to norm CDF with lower bound 80, upper bound 100, mean 88, and standard deviation 19, and that's equal to 0 0.399. And we're done. And so that's how to calculate probabilities when working with the normal distribution by calculating areas under the bell curve. And that's it for this tutorial.